Hello students, uh, today we are starting our new chapter which is chapter number 7 and the name of this chapter is waves and sound. Obviously in this chapter uh, we will discuss on waves and obviously on sound. As you can see here I am your subject teacher Noman Mustaki. I am a lecturer of department of physics from Milestone College. We are going to start this chapter with an uh, important definition. As you can see uh, on the screen, uh, this is the first definition. You have to remember what is wave, the pro uh, periodic motion of particles which transfer energy from one place to another through a medium but does not displace the particles permanently is called the wave. In a gist, I can explain the wave to you. Wave is nothing but a carrier or a media by which we can transfer the energy like the light energy or the um, sound energy etc. Here is uh, another topic. The topic is about the classification of waves. As you know depends on property. There are two types of waves. Number one is transverse wave and another is longitudinal wave. These two terms are uh, very popular to you transverse and longitudinal depends on media there are also two types of waves these are very important number one is electromagnetic wave and another is a mechanical wave number one electromagnetic wave means the waves the waves who don't need any media or the wave who doesn't need any media longitudinal wave or uh, mechanical wave, longitudinal wave or transverse waves are very important but most important things are electromagnetic wave and mechanical wave. The double star line for electromagnetic wave is it is a transverse wave that means electromagnetic wave is a transverse wave like the light wave, light wave is a transverse wave, radio wave is a transverse wave. In our next topic or next uh, lecture we are going to uh, talk about the transverse wave or the longitudinal wave, but you have to remember that the electromagnetic wave is a transverse wave and the second one is a mechanical wave which needs media, mechanical waves need media. As an example we can say water wave or there is another example which is sound wave. So sound wave and uh, water wave needs uh, media, so these are called the mechanical waves. and very important thing is the double star line either it should be transverse or longitudinal wave as well that means mechanical wave should be transverse or longitudinal but electromagnetic wave is only transverse this is another important definition which is transverse wave that means uh, what is transverse wave? The wave which moves perpendicularly to the direction of vibration of the particles is called transverse wave. Particles means wave making particles. That means the direction of the wave and the vibration of the wave making particle are perpendicular to each other. Here is a figure by which uh, I can explain the transverse wave, transverse wave very easily. There is a, um, a rope, there is a rope, the up and down motion of the rope is perpendicular to the direction of the wave as uh, there are some points like A, B, C and D. These are the particles of the wave and the particles are moving up and down, up and down but the wave moves from left to right. So up and down and left to right are perpendicular to each other. That means the direction of the wave is from left to right and the vibration of the particles are from uh, up to down or down to up. So there are uh, 90 degree angle or they are perpendicular to each other. So these kinds of waves are called the transverse waves, light waves or radio waves. We can name any other kind of wave uh, as transverse wave. The important line is here, some important parts of transverse wave, some important parts of transverse wave like the frequency, like the time period, like the phase, 
or uh, amplitude or wavelength. First uh, of all, before starting the um, topic, I must say about the frequency. As you know what is frequency, the number of complete vibration or oscillation or rotation of any object or any particle is called the frequency and its unit is hertz or per second, within a second the number of a complete vibration. And the related topic, the another topic which is time period, the time period is nothing but the required time for a complete vibration. It's a time for a complete vibration, its unit is second. Here is the figure of uh, transverse wave. This is a transverse wave. You can see there are some mm, um, points called crisp, throw, amplitude, wavelength. What is crisp? The zenith, the top position of the wave is called the crisp and the uh, lowest position is called the throw. By creating the crisp and throw, the wave moves forward and the distance between two crisps or the distance between two troughs are called the, is called the wavelength and the wavelength is denoted by a Greek letter which is lambda. So what is amplitude? Amplitude is uh, the maximum displacement. Amplitude is nothing but the maximum displacement of a wave making particle from the equilibrium position is called the amplitude. The dot 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 line is uh, the equilibrium position of particles. You can uh, imagine this uh, a wave of water wave. Uh, so, so, dot dot line shows the equilibrium position of water particles and from the equilibrium position the maximum displacement towards the upward or the downward of a particle is called the amplitude. So, students there are some important uh, definitions about the wave or wave related uh, quantities uh, like frequency, time period. Uh, we have already discussed about the frequency and time period and here is the definition of frequency and time period. Frequency, number of complete vibration in one second is called the frequency. Number of complete vibration or rotation or oscillation in one second is called the frequency. And the uh, frequency symbol is small f and its unit is hertz hz or second inverse 1. Second inverse 1 means per second within one second. Okay, the related topic is time period. The required time for a complete vibration is called the time period and the unit of time period is second. There is the relation between the frequency and time period which is f is equal to 1 by t. That means between f and t there is a inversely proportional relation. That means which has uh, the more frequency, it has less time period or which has the less frequency, it has more time period. So that is inversely proportional relation. We can also write uh, by T is equal to 1 by F. And here is a figure of transverse wave um, as shown in this uh, slide. Uh, so the next definition is amplitude. What is amplitude? Amplitude means the maximum displacement of particles from the equilibrium position. What is equilibrium position? The normal position of any water particles. Just uh, for an example, we can say the normal position of uh, before creating the wave. The dot dot line of this figure shows the equilibrium position of water particles and uh, the maximum displacements towards the upward or downward, the maximum displacement either towards the upward or the downwards is called the amplitude and the uh, uh, amplitude symbol is small a. So what is phase? The overall condition of motion of a wave uh, transmitting particle uh, at any moment is known as the phase. What is overall condition? Overall condition means its velocity, its uh, acceleration, etc. or its displacement also. Here is the definition of wavelength as we discussed before. Wavelength means the uh, distance of two crests or the distance of two trots as the wavelength of a transverse wave or the um, uh, uh, we, can, we, can, we can write also this definition. The distance through which a wave travels in a time during which a wave transmitting particle complete one oscillation is called the wavelength. That means within one oscillation, the covered distance by the wave is called the wavelength. It is denoted by the lambda. Here, we are going to discuss another uh, definition which is longitudinal wave. What is longitudinal wave? 
the wave that travels in a direction parallel to the direction of vibration of the particles of the medium is known as longitudinal wave means the direction of the wave and the vibration of the particle or wave making particle are parallel to each other uh, this is uh, the figure by which we can explain the longitudinal wave uh, here is a tuning fork you know what is tuning fork uh, by um, uh, vibrating the tuning fork we can create sound when the tuning fork vibrates it puts pressure in the air layer the lines the lines the lines are the layer of the air these lines are the layer of the air and when the tuning fork vibrates it puts pressure in the air layer as a result the layer contracts contracts and as the sound moves through the air or moves through the air layer there creates contraction and rarefaction as contraction I have written there compression. So the vibration creates compression and rarefaction. And by creating the rarefaction and compression, rarefaction and comp compression, one after another, the sound wave moves through the air layer. This is the procedure of uh, making or creating the longitudinal wave. Uh, we can create this wave by using the spring also. Spring also. And This is an important slide uh, which shows a comparison of transverse and longitudinal wave. By using this figure, we can explain the longitudinal waves and transverse waves also. In the first figure, uh, here is longitudinal waves and the source of longitudinal waves are some musical instruments. So, the sound wave is a longitudinal wave, here are some uh, expansion, here are some compression and ex expression and the compression, the distance of expression and the compression makes a wavelength of longitudinal wave and in the next figure we can see the transverse wave and the source of transverse wave is the visible light of television or from the sunlight. That means the lights are um, nothing but transverse wave and the sounds are longitudinal wave. So, uh, these are the main difference and throw or crisp, throw or crisp, by creating throw or crisp, the waves goes forward and uh, between two throats or between two crests, the distance is called the uh, wavelength for a transverse wave and the expansion and comprehension makes the wavelength of longitudinal wave. This is our another slide which is about the sound, you know what is sound, sound is an energy here is the definition. Sound is a kind of energy which is produced from vibration, circulates through wave, makes sense of hearing. Intensity of sound. So, what is the intensity of sound? Through a unit area, the amount of sound energy per second is called the intensity of sound. This figure can uh, explain you what is the intensity of sound. Here is an uh, area of 1 meter length and 1 meter breadth. That means its area is 1 meter square. And through this area, uh, through this area, the sound uh, in uh, within 1 second is called the uh, intensity of sound. And the intensity of sound depends on the amplitude of the wave. The more amplitude, the more intensity. And the relation is i is proportional to a square that means the intensity is squarely proportional to the amplitude of the sound range of audibility what is range of audibility every um, human being including the animals that means that in this universe every animal has its uh, range of audibility and as a human being we have our range of audibility which is from 20 hertz to 20000 hertz that means within this range within this range we can hear the sound Frequency of 20 hertz from 20,000 hertz is uh, the audibility of the human being. But less frequency than the 20 hertz is called the infrasonic sound and more frequency than 20,000 hertz is called the ultrasonic sound. The commonly started range of human hearing is 20 to 20,000 hertz. This is another important slide which is about the echo 
so what is echo when a sound becomes separated from its original sound and is repeated due to reflection then this sound is called the echo but the figure can explain what is echo by clapping uh, an object is creating the sound it uh, moves through the um, uh, air layer and there is a deflector or barrier like the wall and from this wall it reflected and came back to the source and this phenomena is called the echo but to create echo you have to maintain some condition and these conditions are the conditions necessary for hearing the echo the lines are very important so let's go with the lines the distance between the sound source and the reflecting surface must not be less than 16.6 meter that means the minimum distance to make or create uh, echo is 16.6 meter more than 16.6 meter is okay but less than 16.6 uh, 16 meter cannot create any echo where the time period between hearing the original sound and its echo sound not be less than 0.1 of a second that means 0.1 second uh, means the persistence period of hearing uh, within 0.1 second after hearing the uh, main sound or the source within 0.1 second we can't recognize the um, another sound or the separate sound or we can't separate the uh, echo that means to hearing echo or for hearing echo the sound should come after 0.1 second or 0.1 second the um, uh, minimum timing is 0 0.1 but 0 0.2 0 0.3 is okay more than 0 0.1 is okay for creating echo but less than 0 0.1 um, can't create any echo so these two points are very important the distance which is 16.6 meter the minimum distance and the sound this is called the persisting period 0 0.1 second is very important